So here's, here's you guys, a couple things while they continue to warm up. A couple things, as a, as a goalkeeper, okay, that for you guys here, do you spend time with your goalkeepers? Thank you. Be, it, you can readily admit why. So if you're a person that doesn't spend a lot of time with their goalkeepers, why? And don't, don't be afraid to speak up, okay? I am a product that when I was a youth goalkeeper, I got no training, none. I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. Okay, even that even went up into high school. It's goalkeeping for me is a situation where I wish I knew then what I know now. Because I with that with four inches and I would have been like an all American on the national team. Okay? But why do we why do we not train our goalkeepers as much as spend time with them as much as we should? Because where are all eyes come game day? Them. What's the only position on the field that has a negative stat next to their name? Them. Goals against average. Okay? What's the only position on the field that shows up in lights their mistakes? Them. Okay? Because no other position has a scoreboard sitting behind them showing the other team's goals. So there's a level of stress that goes on here. So then if we've spent no time working with our goalkeepers throughout the week because we have a goalkeeper coach or just we stick them with a goalkeeper trainer for our club, then come game day, you better pick and choose your words correctly dealing with your goalkeeper. And again, I speak to this from personal experience, that I had coaches who come game day, you have not spent a day, a minute with me, and then come game day, you're yelling at me. Doesn't work that way. Okay? So let's think twice about that. And if you give a kid, even if you're not 100% sure what you're doing, if you give 10, 15 minutes of practice to be with your goalkeepers, that speaks volumes come game day. Okay? Think about the people in your own life you work hardest for. Why and who are they? You don't have to answer the question, just think about it. So the next thing that came up is at U10s. How do we get more kids involved in goalkeeping? All right, who's a, who's a goalkeeper in here? Why did you play? Why did I play? Yeah, why were you a goalkeeper? There was no running to do. <laughs> That's exactly the reason why I started, too. I didn't like all the running, so I played in the goal. What else? I got a shirt that was different than everyone else. My mom always said that uh, like, the goalkeeper was the poor kids because they couldn't wear the same shirt as everybody else. So <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> That's a new one. Yeah, very much so. They've done studies on it. Are there, and the gloves, right? Gloves were off. They were like gardening gloves with rubber on them. And then you sprayed stick them on them and then God forbid you touch the ground, then that went to heck. All right, but I got to wear different gloves. I got to actually pick up the ball, and as a basketball player, soccer came to me late. So as a softball basketball player, it was a natural thing to just play in the goal, right? And I got a different shirt, and I got to yell, and I didn't have to run. And that, for me, was why I started playing in the goal, but... And I also just love the fact that I could be different than everyone else. And I loved that. Okay? Now, this goes back to your ability to, to also show the amount of fun things can be. And I said it in the last session. What's the number one reason why kids play? Fun. What's the number one reason why they stop playing? It's no longer fun. So it's our job as coaches to make sure things are fun in a learning environment. And that doesn't matter, it matters all the way up through, okay? As high as you can go in the game, it should still be fun. You ever see interviews with Lionel Messi? He plays his best soccer when he plays like a kid, and he just goes and plays and have fun. The best player in the world, arguably, just having fun, okay? So if you can instill fun in this, 
And why do more kids want to play in the goal? If you sit there and you tell them constantly what they're doing wrong, who wants to play in the goal? No one. Go back to your towns also, and if you have a kid who's U10 or smaller playing on a full-size goal, who wants to continue to play in the goal? And at certain ages, someone just told me at certain ages from their town, they have goalkeepers. You shouldn't specialize in goalkeeping until you're like 15 or 16. You watch Manuel Neuer play? What is he? Plays the ball. A modern goalkeeper plays the ball more times with their feet than their hands. So why don't we play more in practice with feet? You send your, you send your kids off to keeper training. Where do they spend most of their time? Their hands in diving. Go back and watch a game and how many times someone catches and dives in a game as opposed to plays with their feet, okay? So you guys as field player coaches instill the feet as well, okay? And you guys also as field player coaches know a heck of a lot more than goalkeeping than you think you do, okay? And hopefully by the end of the session we'll know that. Last, last thing, and then I'll get off my soapbox and we'll get going with these guys. So when we think about it, soccer players, what's one of our biggest problems in youth sport today? Early specialization, right? The biggest crossover for this position is basketball, right? You're missing a goalkeeper on your team, go to the basketball team and purge, right? The hand-high coordination, the foot skill, it's a spin move for a post player is the same thing you use to go across the face of the goal, right? It's the same thing. So early specialization in sport is not doing our sport and any other sport any help. And not to mention the boatload of studies that have been done about the physiological part of it too with increase of injury when we specialize too early, okay? Let them play whatever they want. All right, so you guys ready to go? Here's what I want you to do is we're just gonna use the basketball court right now. Actually, we're gonna use this side. All I want you to do, give me two, we need two more balls out here. And you guys, I just want you to pass and move. Go ahead. We'll just go one more ball right now. Ready? Go ahead. Pass, move. There's another ball. Go ahead. Up. Okay, does everyone know everyone's name out here? Use them. Not here, here. Use them. Keep going. A couple more. Okay, hold up. So here's the thing. As a goalkeeper, this, I'm a stickler of this, right? So playing the outside of your foot as a goalkeeper, what's behind you? If you mess up, what's going to happen? Where's the safest position to receive a ball? Inside of the foot? It's safer, correct? Okay, not to mention if I receive a ball and I spin this way, okay, I've just played the ball flat. And the other thing too is there's a greater margin of error when I play with the outside of my foot to change the point of attack. All right, what also happens when I do this? Where do my shoulders and my head go? This way to the sideline, correct? Now, if you play me the ball and I've backed out, All right, now where are my head and shoulders? Facing this way, now I can see back that way. If I flip the ball this way, now I'm looking this way. And yes, is this a, a sticky point? Yeah, this is a finer detail, but you guys are all a little bit older, okay? So this is where I start to pick on the little things. And this makes a difference in the next level, okay? Now, what else has to happen? I need to hear you. As a goalkeeper, I need to hear you. Okay, you guys ready to go? Go ahead, play. Last time that we move on. Now remember, that can result in a goal. If we're not taking control, heads up, where do we find? Heads up, where do we find? So your goalkeepers need to be, your goalkeepers have got to be soccer players who can use their hands. Not just a goalkeeper. So right now, the little things of passing and receiving have got to come in. Is my head up? Can I see where I'm going with the ball? Good. Uh, 
All right, and hold. So now your next one. Can I have your ball, please? Thank you. So now your next one. All right, I'm going to play it to your feet. You're going to scoop it. Okay, so I play, scoop. Now put it down. Play it with your feet to another keeper. All right? Now, we, we kind of joke around about it, right? What does that end up in, in a game? Right? So the higher up I go, and I wouldn't necessarily do this with younger goalkeepers, but the higher up I go, it becomes more demanding for this part of the game. Okay? Because that's going to result in a goal. Right? So now, go ahead, play me the ball. All right, so I'm here. I scoop it on up. What's your name? So right here, Maddie, yep. We'll make it easier on you. We'll do it that way instead. So you're going to bowl. You guys ready to go? Play. Scoop it. Find someone. I need to hear names. I need to hear names. Good. Spread it on out. Keep moving. Maddie, you can bowl it. Go ahead. Good. Keep going. Good. Find someone. Good. And we can see, hey, I want to hear you guys. Okay, where do we see sometimes some problems in goalkeeping? People don't talk enough. Especially on the youth level, I'm afraid I'm going to make them upset with me so I don't talk. Okay? Some good stuff. There's some good stuff. Good. All right, and hold. Nice job. So here's a couple points, all right? First, you guys are all doing a great job of bowling. Thank you so much, all right? And your local bowling alley will thank you for that, too. So good job with that. The other thing, too, is when we receive low, okay, you all are doing, if you guys notice this, they're all doing a great job of receiving in here, okay? This right here, if we think about it, and I watch this get taught. What's your name? Ellen? Ellie, sorry. So now, Ellie, put the ball on your feet. Okay, thank you. So now, this used to get taught a lot. Ellie, play me the ball. This. Now, let's take goalkeeping aside. Let's think about safety. What's exposed if Ellie runs at me? Ellie, put the ball on the floor. Pass it to me and run at me. What's exposed? My head. Right? Have you guys all done your concussion training yet? Go ahead and do it. And now let's think about this safety-wise. So now it's my head that's exposed. So they're all doing a great job, Ellie, this time. Go ahead, play. All right? I scoop, and then I'm out of the way. Right? Now my head is protected. protected. And you talked about wanting to do some diving stuff. This would also lead into diving. Okay? It's that angle of attack. We want to attack to and through a ball. And so you also notice... When they do this, too, notice the positioning of their hands. It's right here. All right? And it's right here. What happens if my hands fail? My leg is there as an insurance policy. So if I do this, where's my insurance policy? You don't have one. And you're got, as the higher level goalkeepers, you'll see do this, but you're not making millions of dollars, so don't worry about it. You need to get the basics down first here. Okay? So let's see a couple more times so the coaches can see some similarities of how you guys are projecting your hands forward, and also how you're attacking to and through a ball. Ready? Go ahead. Play. Good. Attack to and through. So as a goalkeeper, the second, here's another thing to play around with, and I mentioned this in the last session too, play around with the verbiage that you use. So when you talk about the, peop the four people or three that play in front of the goalkeeper, what do you call them? What does everyone call them? Defenders, right? What happens when they have the ball at their foot? Are they still a defender? No, they're a back. They're a first attacker. So don't let the backs get away. And now, as a goalkeeper, so when this ball ends up in Ellie's hands, what's Ellie now? She's the first attacker. Exactly. So my concepts of teaching attacking are going to go way back to Ellie. 
Ellie's a first attacker, so now she better have first attacker skills and first attacker knowledge. She's not a defender, she's an attacker. Good, and hold. So do you guys see all the similarities? And we're lucky, you guys are lucky. These are very, these are well-trained goalkeepers. Prince does a great job with them. So they're doing the little things right. They're projecting their hands out in front. It's rolling on up into like your forearms parallel railroad. And you also notice their shoulders. It wraps around. The other thing this leads into, and I would never do this on a gym floor, this also leads into the front smother. So one skill builds on the next, builds on the next, builds on the next. Okay? So that's our low save out in here. Now, the next one of what we're going to do, may I have your ball, please? Okay? You're going to give me a good picture. It's coming in a basket. Okay? Were you here last year? My God, how you've grown. <laughs> Stop moving. All right. Well, this brings up a good point because I remember you last year, and you know one of the hardest age groups to coach? In goalkeeping, adolescent boys. All right, why? Because I remember you tripping on your feet last year. And now you've come in, he's come into his body. And you guys, I do a lot of training of like little kids and adolescent boys, and I would have to say that's one of, I mean, Prince, please correct me if I'm wrong, is you grow so quickly, and now I look at him and I'm like, oh wow, you've grown a lot, all right? So that age group is hard to coach, without a doubt. Okay, sorry guys, your feet grow real damn fast and you don't know where to put them. All right, so now it's nice to see his development too. Nice job, sir. All right, so now our next one is going to be a basket catch. So our basket catch is in here. All right, put it in the basket. Again, forearms parallel. If I don't get this down, this is going to be a challenge. If I do this, it's going to slip out. This also does not lead into front smothering. Okay, so now everyone know where the hips are. These are the hips. These are the knees. The ball needs to be between the knees and the hips. If it goes up here, you're going to hit a teammate in the mouth. And we don't want that. So now what's going to happen? Two hands, hips. All right, go back into that position. And you were staggered a little bit. Brilliant. So you see how his shoulders are wrapped around, OK? He's in a good, solid position. So if I run into him, he's solid. If he puts his feet together, go ahead. Here's another thing about that picking the ball up with your feet together. He's like a tall candlestick. He's going to fall over. Now he goes into that good, solid, confident position of scooping to and through. It's locked away. There it is. So you guys, can you guys do that now? Relax. So can you guys do that now? Show everyone here that basket. So again, it's here. Tuck it away. Go ahead, play. And then we'll go over a couple other things. Good job. Keep going. Find someone else. Find someone else. Yeah, go your underhand service. Get, in, get close. Get close. It's okay. Two hand underneath. Good. Good. Brilliant. Now, what's starting to happen? Did you notice what a couple of them are doing? And this is, this is again, pick up on the little things. Let me see if she'll... What did, she, what did Ellie just do? Did you guys see it? Start noticing the little things. Go ahead, Ellie. One more time. And then we're going to fix you. Go ahead. See how she steps backwards to receive a ball? Hold up. Ellie, what's behind you? Right? So this is not what we want. Going backwards will be, there, this is an advanced skill of back setting. It is not what we're doing here. So instead, what's your name? Nate. Nate. So when Nate throws you the ball, instead of doing this, coming back because your shoulders came back, what do you think I want you to do? Proactive. You ready? Her, not me. Ready? Go ahead. A little bit better. But now you're catching here, right? So does your body need to be behind the ball? Right. So coaches, when we're teaching our field players how to receive or head a ball or chest a ball, what do we, what's the first thing we tell them to do when we're talking about receiving a ball? Get in line with it, correct? This is the same exact thing in goalkeeping. As much as your body behind the ball as possible. It's the same concept. So now, Ellie, get behind the ball, fix that, go ahead. All right, Nate, give her a nice ball in there. Go ahead, fix it. Better. Do you see how she's still stepping back? I'd like to see her come forward. But that's, we'll work on it. Prince will have that out of her in no time at all. All right, you guys, you ready? Go ahead, play. A couple more, and then we move on. Nice adjustment of the hands, Nate. I like that. 
Whoop. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. There we go. Nice job. Good job. All right, and relax. So what are some of the trends, what are some of the things you guys see in similarities between all of them? They're all doing a great job, every single one of them. But what do you see? Because come game day, OK, I don't need to go off on a diatribe about Ellie coming back. All I need to say is, Ellie, proactive, go for it. Right? And then Ellie knows, yeah, i got to go hard to the ball. I don't have to go off on this long explanation. OK, what are some similarities that you guys see in this? How are their hands? Behind the ball, right? Where are their shoulders? As much as behind the ball that they can possibly get, right? What else do you see? Do you see a, sta do you see a tight stance or do you see a staggered stance that they're nice and loose in there? All looks good. All right, now here's the next thing. Now we have a contour catch. So when I grew up, it was called a W. Then I heard the diamonds. Then I heard, oh, wait, no, it's a WC. How about we just cause, call it the shape of the ball? All right, so if you take your hands and you just put them, relax them, and you guys can try this, so put your notebook down. Put your notebook down. You guys put the ball down. All right, just relax your hands. Now take your hands and do this. Now touch your thumbs together. That's the shape of the ball. See, every single person, I just saw you do it. That's the shape of the ball. So getting into like WC and all this stuff, or diamond, or this and that, forget the letters. Catch the shape of the ball, OK? So does it turn if it's drilled here? Because now if I say it's a W catch, what happens when it gets drilled here? Your hands change to this, because it's the shape of the ball. But if all I'm ever taught is W, that's going to turn into some crazy trying to catch a ball here, because it turns into this, OK? You guys ready to show them a beautiful picture? Thank you. What's your name? Gia. Gia? You were here too. How do I, I know the name though. Okay, got it. Gia, you ready to show a beautiful picture? You sure? All right, you ready? Yeah. Now, what's, what's she doing? She's stepping backwards. So in baseball and softball, on a ground ball, if you step backwards, what happens? Exactly. You take it in the mouth. Did that happen to you once or twice, <laughs> right? So again, the crossover of sports. We move to and through a ball as a baseball and softball player. Outfielder, where's your first step as an outfielder and the ball goes up? Baseball, softball, where's your first step? It's this, correct? What's the first thing that happens when the ball goes up in goalkeeping? This, and then we come forward, OK? Get against the wall. Put your shoulders against the wall. Ready? Good. Here, keep going. Oh, good. Good. Watch the ball. That's it. That's brilliant. All right, so if you notice, please look at where Gia's eyes are. Gia, do me a favor. Hold the ball. Give me the ball. Keep your hands where they are. Notice where her hands are. Shape of the ball. OK? Done. Do you also notice her wrist angle? I'm going to show you one last thing, because this comes up. Catch it. Now she stepped backwards. All right, so now you notice her wrist angle as well. It's here, not here. So now if she puts her wrist that way, go ahead, put your wrist that way and try to catch a ball. Ready? So come when we're training, if I've coached her appropriately, all I have to do is say, Gia, wrist angle. She knows what that means. Ready? Wrist angle. Done. Right? And we're still stepping backwards, but that will get cleaned up. But did I ask her about wrist angle? Yes. So she went from here to here. This makes a difference. Shock absorber system, the whole thing starts with your finger pads, and then it all builds back through your shoulders all the way to your toes. Let's see what you guys have. Go ahead, play. Good, good. Well, I'm seeing a lot of good stuff. Remember, you guys, at the face. Face. We'll go over anatomy later. That almost hit me in the head. Thank you. Good. Come on. Keep going. You guys can get a little closer. Cause we, hey, what's the way, main way everyone learns a skill? Keep going. Repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Good. Keep going. Now, hold. So you guys hear every once in a while you hear that hard, that hard catch sound? OK? 
So what I need for you guys to do is when your hands are out in here, I need you to give just a hair bit more. Because there's going to come a time where you guys are going to be facing shots that if you keep your hands all the way out here and it hits, it's going to hit down off your hands. Okay? So how soft can we be catching? A couple more each and then we move on. Go ahead. Good job. Keep going. Oh, I like the adjustment of the hands, Nate. That was a nice job. Good. All right, and relax. So here's the one thing in your converting a basketball player, is basketball players will tend to catch more with the hand that they're going to shoot with. So you just have to make sure that you adjust their hands. So if, go ahead, throw me the ball. So it tend to be a little bit more like catch with this and then here like they're used to. So just be prepared that it's this way. And the good thing is, is that our position is instant feedback, because if your hands aren't in the right position, where's it going to go? In your mouth, right? So you're going to get hit right here. So here's your next one, all right? Now we're going out for a high ball. Give me a ball. All right, so now what's going to happen is going to be right in here. Good. Now, what's the missing component? I need to hear it, OK? Now, go ahead, and we'll see what the trend, what your common is. Go ahead, play. See what the commonalities are. Now, here's where, the, here's where Ellie's going to shine, because now she can step backwards. Good. Keep going. Good. You guys, get out of that corner away from there. This is probably the hardest service of what you're going to have, is this. Good, good, good. We're seeing some good stuff. I thought you were going for three on that. Good job. It's OK. All right, and hold, and hold. What was your name again? Maddie. Awesome. Thanks for the coaching point. I appreciate it. Did you guys notice what surface did Maddie attack the ball with? You guys notice this? Thank you. Brilliant. Heel of the hand, right? Maddie, can you change your wrist angle instead? You ready? I think I like that better. Give me one more. All right. Ready? Oh, I think I like that. Nice catch, coach. Well done. All right. So here's the other thing, too, is if I catch the ball out in here, right, the whole going back to the, one of the basic premises of goalkeeping is a shock absorber system. If I catch here, I got all this room to work. If I catch the ball here, which I've noticed Ellie do a couple times, is that where she gets in trouble and falls backwards? Exactly. OK, so we need to be able to catch out in here to bring it here, not catch here, because the shoulders physiologically are not going to move that way. OK? Not to mention, when I get up in here and I start to bring my arms back, what happens to my hands? You see how I'm flattened out? I can keep them here better, right? So can we catch a little bit more in front of your forehead? Can you try that for the next couple? All right, go ahead. Is this a layup in basketball? Yep. The initial step, is it an outfielder in baseball and softball? Yep. Good. And what's the only way people get better at this? Repetition, repetition, repetition. It's OK. All right, and hold. This is a nice picture right here. Can you do this again? Can I have the ball, please? Let me the ball. Thank you, sir. All right, if you notice, where's his first step? OK, then I also want you to pay attention to his steps preceding that. You ready? You see how his feet consistently move? All right, so he takes his step back, and then he's got these little steps. What's that in basketball? It's this. I'm sizing it up, and then I go, right? So he's using all those little choppy steps to get in the right position to be able to attack it. All right, that's a great job. Now, we do all these skills, and we send our goalkeepers off to keeper coaches. Please remember there's a difference between a keeper coach and a keeper trainer. What's the difference? Who wants to take a shot? Are you guys coaches or trainers? You're a coach? Yeah, of course you are. Be proud. At the end of the day, what's a coach? How many of you are teachers? Bless your hearts. All right, so at the end of the day, as a coach, you're a teacher. A trainer doesn't teach. A coach teaches. Make sense? 
So if you're sending your kids off to just get the crap beat out of them, that's not coaching. That's training. We send people off to get coached and to teach. That's what we want, okay? So as coaches, you guys are teachers at the end of the day, all right? Keep that in mind. Just your classroom is way different. I, I went to school for education. I have my degree in elementary ed and special education. My, my, how my classroom has changed and it's now a big turf field, okay? So here's what we want to do now. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the footwork involved in goalkeeping, okay? You guys ready to do this? Do you have water bottles with you? Okay, can you do me a favor and get a quick drink? Because you guys are doing a heck of a job. And then what we're going to need is when you guys come out, you're going to need a partner and a ball. That's a good set of goalkeepers you guys have to watch. Yeah. All right, you guys ready to go? You guys do a nice job. Must be all that coaching. All right, so you guys got a partner and a ball. So you got a partner and a ball. All right, then you're going to need a set of dots, hot spots, whatever you guys call them at your school. All right, one partner is going to be behind the red. Sorry, I just messed up your nice piles of pennies. Sorry about that. All right, and then the other partner, the partner who has the ball, I need you out here on this green line. Okay, come on out here. All right, across from the red cone, ball at the feet. So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to take your spot for just one second. Put the ball down on your feet, OK? So what's going to end up happening is I'm in my, we're going to talk about the ready position in a second, because I'm seeing some things that I would love to work with, OK? So right in here, what we're going to do is a little bit of shuffle over behind green. Then we're going to take a positive step forward in front of red. You're going to play the ball at my feet. So I'm here, scoop it, play it back. Side on, come back, mini shuffle, here. OK, you guys got that? All right, for sake of time, we're going to do three on each side. So start behind red, shuffle behind green, step in front of red. You're going to do that three times. And then you're going to switch sides. You're going to switch partners. And we're going to see what we can see as far as footwork. You ready? Go ahead. Keep it short, tight. Keep those feet active. Now we're going to get into the ready position after this. Good, that's three, switch sides. No, switch sides, not just switch to the other side, just so I can see where we're going, who we have. Good, attack two and through it. Remember, attack two and through. So we can see where overall mobility and strength and core strength also comes through with our goalkeepers, because if you can't bend your hips down, you're in big trouble. And this is also going to play into diving. And here's the other thing, too. The older you get as a goalkeeper, for the older goalkeepers in the room, like Prince, the longer you played, was diving fun? Was diving fun? Not now. Not now, exactly. Go ahead, switch. So the older you get, you also intellectualize the position more. So for those of you who follow Manchester United, anyone a United fan in here? Thank you. Anyone else? Right. So David De Gea, go ahead. You guys know what you're doing. Go ahead, play. So David De Gea, when he first came to the league, arguably the best reactionary goalkeeper around, right? What was his big weakness? Couldn't handle a cross ball to save his life, right? Now, if you watch him play, because now was he like 30? He's getting up there. He's, he's older now. So he's, so he's smarter. Right? He's smarter with the game. Why did Seaman play so late? Why is Buffon at the level he's at? Because he's smarter. Okay? You intellectualize the position more the higher up you go. And De Gea is arguably becoming one of the best in the world now that Neuer is out for a little while. All right? All right. So here's what I'm seeing from a lot of you guys. Okay? 
And as we move across the goal, a lot of it has to be like choppy stuff. Why? Because if you got to cut back at any point, if I'm committed to these huge steps, I can't reverse my step. Okay? I grew up in a time, and for the older goalkeepers in the room, I grew up in a time where it was don't ever cross your feet in the goal. Well, that was one of the stupidest things that was ever said to me. All right? Because what's the fastest way to get across the goal? Crossing your feet, right? But I was told as a kid, never cross your feet in the goal. And that was just never made sense. Plus, there's no absolutes in the game of life. So here's what I want you guys working on now. So what's going to end up happening, because a couple of you get pretty flat-footed, OK? And we shouldn't be flat-footed in the goal. So now what's going to happen is you're here, you come back, and my feet are constantly got a movement to them. You guys got that? OK? So again, I'm here. Sorry, I'll make it look better this time. All right, so I'm here, chop, chop, and then I can attack. You guys all take physics yet? Object in motion stays in motion, right? So if I, have to, if I move across the goal, I stop, I have to restart. If I move across the goal and I keep my feet moving, then I can react quicker because I'm already moving. You ready to give it a shot? It's a little dance, and it's not this. You're not a prize fighter. It's right in here. And please don't say stay on your toes because the literal kid will take that to this. And the first thing you have to do to move is this. So instead, keep your weight shifted forward. You got that? Go ahead, play. Keep your feet moving. Keep your feet moving. Nice and light on your feet. And again, oh, that's a brilliant picture down here. Keep going. Keep going. Right here. Watch this. Watch this. How nice is that right there? That's exactly what I want right there. I love that. Now, when you guys are teaching your, bat, when you're teaching your field players how to defend, what's one of the tips you give them about their feet? Keep your feet moving, correct? When you play basketball, do you defend like this? Or do you defend here? I'm ready to move. OK, so again, the crossover sport. Go ahead, play. I want to see what happens with him. Keep your feet moving. Attack it. I love that. Keep your feet moving. Attack it. Now, let's not start moving forward until you've seen the path of the ball. OK? Ready? Go. Let me see it. Keep your feet moving. Now attack it. Love that. Good. And bring it up into your chest, and you got it. Good. A couple more. I love it. Love it. All right, you two switch, because I want to see you go, Maddie. I love it. Great job. Great job. All right, keep those moving. Keep them moving. Attack it. So here's what I want you to do is I want you to keep your feet moving, because right now you're getting across in here, and you're going here. And where your shoulders go, when you put your weight in your heels, where do your shoulders go? They go back, right? So instead, when you get across here, I want your shoulders to stay forward and stay light on your feet. Do you guys see this? Watch what happens. We're getting there. Come on back. You can do it. All right, so now when your feet come across, come with me. You ready? So we're here. Go ahead. Come back across. Now my feet are here. So you feel, feel how your feet are balanced this way? Yes. Do you feel that? Yeah. Okay, now do this. Put your heels down. Where'd your weight go? In the back. Where'd they go? In the front. That's what I want you to do. All right, All right you ready? Let's see if we can fix this. Ready? Go. I like it. Can you give me one more? A little bit more oomph, a little bit more of this. A little attitude, right? You ready? Get those shoulders forward and attack it. Oh, I love that. That's huge. I love that. Can you give me one more in the other direction, though? And then I'll be satisfied. Just so I can know you can do it in both directions. Ready? Go. You can do it. You ready? Aha. What do you guys think? Do you like that better? Man, I love that. That was awesome. All right, so this is if we're moving around in the goal where it's tight, OK? Super, super tight. We're in here. Now I can move back. Because we can do 101 footwork drills out of this as well. That was bad wording. 101 footwork activities out of this. Please don't use the word drill. What does drill imply? Going to the dentist in pain, right? So instead, can we instead use the word activity? Just give it a try. See what happens. I don't like getting my teeth drilled. 
Can you do me a favor and move that cone out to the other side of the basketball lane? Okay. So now, what we're gonna do in here is you should, yeah, yeah, we're good. You're gonna have to take that, Maddie, take that one out a little bit wider to the yellow line. Then your starting line is gonna be right on the side of the basketball court, okay? So now what's gonna happen here? You have this line that you're starting from. You guys have a line, should have a line down there, I believe. If not, we'll make you one. So in here now, if I shuffle across the goal, is it fast enough? So, right? It's not fast enough. So what do I have to do? I have to cross my feet, right? But wait, I was told as a kid I couldn't do that. That doesn't work, right? Because now I get in here, and if I'm told I've never crossed my feet, now I've just told the striker, can you please hold on? Because I was told not to cross my feet, so don't shoot the ball yet. So instead, you're going to start on this center line. You're going to small shuffle out. We're going to cross over here. And at the end of the day, turn and run. So you're here, and then I'm here. And then we play. Tack it, play it back to feet. You guys got that? So start at that center mark. All right, so it's a shuffle out to green, crossover step back. Ready, go. Good. Move yourself over this way too. Yeah, there you go. Get over there. Oh, I like this. Good job, kid. Keep going. Ellie, nice work. Now, Ellie, here's what I want. Get on that center line. You hit that green cone, I want you to get across the red as quickly as possible. You ready? Go. Get there. Good. I like it, kid. Keep going. This is hard work. Of course, you forgot how to count because it's only three in each direction. No worries. All right. Good. Hey, you. Come on, Maddie, give me one more, because that looks awesome. You guys all forgot how to count. Yes, good job. I like it. I like it. All right, and hold. Let's go back to what just happened over here. What's your name again? Nate. I'm so sorry, Nate. Did you guys just see what Nate did? He bobbled it, right? But what are we focusing on for this particular activity? It's footwork, right? So if I break down the whole thing and I said, Nate, and now all of a sudden I start focusing on his hands and his positioning of his shoulders and all this other stuff, is Nate going to have a little bit of info overload? Right. I'm asking Nate to be successful with his feet. Nate, love the feet. Add in the hands. You ready to go? Go. Great job on the feet. Get across. Get across. Attack it. No diving. All right. You're young and spry on a gym floor in front of people, that's lovely. Use your feet. Ready? Give me the complete picture. You ready? Go. Get across. Get across. Attack it. Ah, I think I like that. OK? So much better on that one. But if I sit there and I pick on every little thing, is Nate going to leave here feeling confident about himself? Or is he going to be like, God, I couldn't do a single thing right today? Right? So pick and choose the skill to correct. All right? So here's your last one with this. So did we notice, did we notice then, and you guys switch, please. So when you get across in here, and then it's that crossover step to here. The trick of the crossover step is that once you've gotten that good explosive movement across, how do I get my hips back? Is this not footwork for a short stop in baseball and softball? Sorry, I know I keep going back to other sports, but you guys, let's be real. We're asking kids to, to specialize way too early, OK? So that if the ball is hitting the hole, I'm here, and I throw, right? But if I don't have all of that, OK? And the same thing happens in basketball. I'm here, and then i got to be here. So it's taking that explosive moment, movement and slowing it down to get my hips back square. So here's our, here's our last one, and then we'll go over the ready position quickly. So if you could be in the, on the red line, and you can pick it up for sake of repetition. Come up to the green and the red. So near post, far post, and this is this footwork now. This is tennis, OK? So if I start facing that way in line with my green cone, and I'm here, 
Now I've just turned, okay? So instead of thinking drop, step, crossover, if I play tennis and I'm up at the line and the ball gets lobbed over my head, what do I do? Right? This also comes in in football. So I'm here, all right? The ball gets slotted back. So I'm here, cross over, and then I'm here. So now the services are going to be at his face. Ready to go? Show me. Let's see how brilliant this looks. Just throw it at his face when he gets there. All right, you ready? Set, go. Good, and back. All right, you guys got it? So it's that quick hip turn. We're here, and there, there. It's quarter eagle from football. You ready? Go. Quick. And push off those feet. Get your feet turned and push. Go back to your green cone. Let's see if we can get it. Love this right here. Go. Oh, I love that. Nice job. Now just remember this. Go. I like it. I like it. How about one more so we can see? Good job. I like it. All right, and hold. All of that looks fantastic, okay? Where else does this come in? Move up close to me. Come on. So, and this will be my last one. Then. As a female goalkeeper, I did not like it when people said, oh, it's a weakness of the women's game. No, high balls are not a weakness of the women's game. It's an excuse for not teaching it, okay? So how do we move back more quickly? So for a six foot, for a six foot five goalkeeper male, where's the weakness in the game? Okay, but we train that, but yet we don't say, we say that high balls are a weakness in the women's game and we just chalk it up as that, right? So instead train it. So where else does that footwork come in? Come on up close to me. If I tell you to get back there as quickly as possible, how are you gonna go? I want you to get to the green cone as quickly as you can. You ready, go. Did you just notice his feet? Right? But yet, sometimes this is taught, backpedaling, okay? So it's get to it as quickly as possible. Come on up to me. The ball's coming this time, and I'm going that way. Ready, set, go. Did you notice his feet? That was absolutely brilliant. That's how you move backwards. That's baseball, softball. That's tennis right there, okay? So if you pound that, we got it. That goes back to the positioning question that you guys had, okay? If you can, and I wish I had a dry erase board to do this, but I think we can kind of get it in here. So if I have my six, which is here, 12, about right here, and 18, conveniently split into thirds, correct? Right, six, 12, 18. So if the ball is on the other end, way up with Nate, where can I be? I'm on my 18. I don't know if you guys saw this highlight that was on um, Instagram the other day, but it was a goalkeeper who had a shot taken on him from 50 yards away, and he had to do this, and makes this diving save backwards, rolls over the ball, keeps it pinned on the end line. Did you guys see that? People are like, oh, that's a great save. I'm like, no, it's absolutely awful, because he's in the wrong position, All right? So if the ball is up there with Nate, Nate, as an attacker, what's Nate's only options to attack? Pass and dribble, correct? Am I gonna get chipped from 100 yards away? If I do, we got bigger problems. All right, so no. Can I stay up here? My threat is the through ball. As it moves up into the, the defending side, or the attacking side of the middle third, what are the other team's options still, unless you're Carly Lloyd? Pass, pass and dribble. So again, I need to be thinking about the through ball. As the ball starts to move over midfield, what do I need to start to do? I need to start to move into my midfield, in my penalty area, which is the 12 to the 6, right? And as that's starting to come further, what do I do? That's where then I come back. So as the ball enters in to the defending middle third, what's the other team's options at that point? Pass, shoot, dribble. So I have to be ready for every single one of them. Can I cut off the through ball? Can I be ready for the chip over the top? All right? All of those things have got to be going through your head. And that's why I mean, as an older goalkeeper, you get smarter with your positioning. Okay? 
Now it enters into the final third, pass, shoot, dribble, it's all on. So I gotta be ready for the through ball, I have to be ready for the shot. Ball enters into the 18, that's where your angle arc comes in, and that's a whole nother session for a whole nother time, okay? Does that all make sense? And I wish I had a dry erase board to show you. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just email me, I'll send it to you. Or you can ask Prince, because you know he knows what he's talking about too, when I did this, okay? So winter training, I'll guarantee most of it is spent with you on like hands catching and footwork, okay? Wood floors do not, are not a comfortable situation for working on diving, okay? So do you guys have any other questions before we send you off. You sure? Yeah, go. I saw everybody that kind of different techniques to go with the ball. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular way that you look at Yeah. Thanks for asking. All right, so we have the bowl that's for, we have our bowling, okay? We have our windmill throw, which is over the top. Where does that come in? The long ball, okay? Go back to the World Cup with Donovan and, and uh, Tim Howard making that BB throw to midfield to Landon Donovan. Remember that one against Algeria? So that's the long one. Now, if I want to play the ball over here, this might be a little bit too low, too slow, right? The ball, the bowl. So instead, it's the baseball throw that comes up into here, and then we're down into here, okay? And that's that short hop. And again, we want it lower on that, so speed of play. Because if we get it, this huge looping thing, what's the first thing he has to do? Collect it with probably two touches and then go. So in this particular atmosphere, if we had time to do it all, we did a lot of bowling, put distribution into every session you do. Can you guys do that without calling it a distribution session? All right, so demand proper bowling demand the baseball throw. So after your keeper makes a save, instead of making it like a shooting gallery, which is what I see way too often, I make a catch, and you know the parents that like to hang out on the sidelines? Put them to work. All right, sorry. But put them to work and be like, okay, now bowl it over to Jeff's mom. Done. Okay, now there's involvement there. Okay, you guys got that? So just think about that rather than just making it a shooting gallery for people. All right, thank you for your question. Anything else from you guys? All right, and then the, the kicking component, just again, you're gonna teach your field players the same way. Can you guys do me a favor too? Have your goalkeepers take their goal kicks, please? All right, have their goalkeepers, because what ends up happening to the psyche of a kid when you say, you know what, Ellie, forget it, you're not good enough to take that. Let's gonna kind of bring Jeff back here to take it. What did I just do to Ellie? Right? Instead, Ellie, let's just keep working on it. My job, what's my job as a coach? To teach, right? So keep that in mind, right? And this is a beautiful position. Spend some time with your kids and it will be absolutely amazing as to what they do for you come game day, all right? You guys, come on in here, what? Because um, like, you feel tired that day? Because yeah. you just got beat up so much? Yeah, that happens too. I have an our goalkeeper a couple times this year. Yes, I'm okay with that. But it, I want it to come from you, not me. All right, you guys, bring it in here. I like your question. Thank you, sir. You guys, you got to face them. All right, and again, Prince, thank you so much for getting this group together. I really appreciate it. It's also awesome to be back here with you. These guys, are, these guys did a great job. So give them a little hand. And if you guys have any questions, just please let me know. Again, my name is Deb Raber. I'm at MCLA. I'm on the national staff for the United Soccer Coaches, our goalkeeper national staff. So if you guys have any questions, just please let me know. I'm more than happy. But thank you so much.